Welcome to Bursa PLC's Investor Series, Investor Relations Series. So today we are having our 11th series with the topic Malaysia and its role in the FTSE Global Equity Index Series. We are honored to have Ms. Miko Huang with us today. And please allow me a brief introduction about her. Based in Hong Kong, Ms. Huang is part of the APAC Equity Index Product Management Team at FTSE Russell and LSEG Business. She is responsible for equity index product strategy and development with a particular focus on Russell US indexes, infrastructure, Southeast, Asia, Southeast Asian equity indices, and target dividend index series. With nearly a decade of experience in the index product management field, Miko previously worked as a product specialist at Hang Seng Indexes, where she played a crucial role in developing the company's flagship indices and exploring new business opportunities. Miko earned a master's degree of arts in communication from the Hong Kong Baptist University and holds the CFA Institute certificate in ESG investing. So without further ado, I would like to hand over to Ms. Miko Huang. Welcome, Ms. Miko. Thank you. Thank you. Good afternoon, all. Yeah, this is Miko from Pussy Russell. And today's uh, my speech will focus on the Malaysia's role in our Fussy Gears, which is our flagship in the series. So let me share my screen first. Yep. Okay. So um, I think most of you have known about our, our company that's Fuzzy Russell. It is a global index compiler and what the what kind of indices we cover in, in, includes the global equities, domestic equities, and also the global fixed income. So this is the uh, what we, and we also provide um, uh, the indices from a global and local perspectives and worldwide. And so for today, we focus on the Malaysia. And Malaysia uh, actually is in FUSI's roadmap. And uh, we, here we have a roadmap for, for, uh, for Malaysia's development. And for the upper one is the FUSI Global Equity Index Series, which is the FUSI GIS. And the, for the bottom one is the FUSI Person Malaysia Index Series, which I think most of you are quite familiar with. This is an index series that we cooperate with Person Malaysia. But today, we will focus more on the FUSI GIS from a, an international perspective. And back to 2000, we launched the FUSI All World Index series, which covers the All World, the Emerging, the ASEAN indices. And at that time, Malaysia is classified as secondary emerging markets uh, in, in our classification. And then in 2005, we launched the FUSI ASEAN 40 Index, which is um, also a very well-known index in APAC. I think uh, uh, in, in Malaysia and in Singapore, we also have some ETFs that are checking this index. And uh, so in 2006, we have the cooperation with Bursa Malaysia and we launched the FUSI Bursa Malaysia in a series. And in 2009, we have this KLCI, KLCI uh, launch as the futures uh, on Bursa Malaysia. And then in 2011, another big uh, uh, things happened to Malaysia is that we we upgrade uh, Malaysia from the secondary emerging market to advanced emerging market. Yeah, and then in two thousand between two thousand and twelve and two thousand and eighteen, we uh launched uh, uh the KLC options and also the uh, mini futures together with Bursa Malaysia, and last year we also launched another uh in the series which is which is the FTSE ASEAN Extended in the series. Actually, under this in the series, we uh not only cover those uh big five uh, ASEAN countries which are well very well known. We also extended the ASEAN region to cover like Vietnam in our index series. So this is the latest uh, develop, development of ASEAN or Malaysia in Fusi Russell. And here you, uh, I show uh, uh, two kind of two series in the series. Actually, one is from an international angle and the other one is from a local lens. From the international angle, we have the FUSI Global Equity uh, in the series. And under this in the series, we have the Malaysia. 
The first, the, the largest one is the Fusim Malaysia Total Cap Index, which means it covers the large cap, mid cap, small cap, and micro cap companies in this index series. At this moment, we have two, uh, 291 stocks in the index. And then under this index, we have the all, all cap one. The all cap means covers large, mid, and small cap in companies. And then we have also have uh, FUSI Malaysia Index, which covers the large and mid cap companies. And also the large cap, mid cap, and small cap indexes under this index series. So for today, we'll focus mainly on the FUSI Malaysia Index, which covers the large and mid cap Malaysian companies uh, in this index. And on the right side is from a local lens, which is the Bursa Malaysia in a series. And I, I will not touch much on, uh, on it today. And But we, I, I want to show here, that is the um, Pussy, uh, Pussy Russell's uh, offerings related to Malaysia. So before we go into, uh, take a look at Malaysia, let's uh, get some idea of what FUSI GIS is, because the FUSI Malaysia index is derived from the FUSI GIS. So under FUSI GIS, we have um, separate, separate it, it into different angles. One is the market status. Market status means the, uh, the developed market, the advanced emerging market, secondary emerging market, and frontier market. We have a set of uh, criteria to determine what, uh, which, com which country should be developed or, or emerging or even frontier. And we take a look at the, uh, the macro, like the economic growth. And we also have some quality um, market, uh, market criteria and also the securities requirements to assess the, uh, the country. It should, be belong to, it should belong to the developed emerging or frontier. And also we have uh, the size segments for, for all the stocks. Uh, that is the large cap, mid cap, small cap, and micro cap. And other than that, we have different indices uh, like the style indices, like the growth, the value, defensive, dynamic. And also we have an, our own industry classification benchmark, which help us to identify or classify the stocks uh, industry, which industry or which sector it should belong to. Yeah, as mentioned just now, uh, we have uh, developed markets, advanced emerging market, secondary emerging market, and frontier market in our FUSI GIS. And here, uh, as mentioned previously in the roadmap, Malaysia is in under the advanced emerging market. And at this moment, we have 10 countries that sit in the adva advanced emerging market group. Uh, Malaysia is, is one of it. So, um, from uh, here, I, I have some uh, some very high level introduction of the global uh, of the global uh, equity index series, which is the GIS, and how we build this index and what kind of indexes are included in this uh, in the in in this flagship index series. Yeah, we have uh, from the very bottom, you can see that we have this uh, stocks that classify as large cap mid cap, small cap, and micro cap, and also cover the markets from developed, advanced emerging, secondary emerging, and frontier. And then we take a look from the very top of this of this building. From the, very, the, the, the first top of it, uh, we have our flagship index, which is the FUSI All World Index. All World means uh, large mid cap companies. We, in this index, we cover the large mid-cap stocks from, from the developed and emerging countries, emerging markets. So at this moment, we have around uh, 4,300 large and mid-cap stocks in the index. So uh, before uh, other than large and mid, we also have small cap. And so on the, on, on the left-hand side, we have the FUSI Global Small Cap Index, and we have uh, around 6,000 6, stocks in this index. And we, the all world index and also the small cap index uh, form the global global all cap index. So under all cap, we have the large, mid, small cap uh, stocks in the index. And then we also have the micro cap for those very tiny and small companies that cannot become the uh, large or mid or small cap companies under FUSI Russell's definition. It will become the, uh, most of them will be Will belong to the micro cap companies. So we have another index that is the FUSI Global Micro Cap Index to, to include all those companies from uh, developed and also the emerging markets. 
And at this moment, we have uh, more than 9,000 stocks in this index. So as mentioned just now, we not only uh, classify those stocks by their market cap, but also we have classifications for the markets. So we have the FUSI developed total, total cap index and also the FUSI emerging total cap index. And all of this, we will have the most large, la the largest index named FUSI global total cap. So under this index, we cover all those large, mid, small, and also micro cap stocks in the index. And of course, other than the developed and emerging markets, we also have the frontier markets. So frontier markets, maybe you may be very familiar with Vietnam, and now it's set as frontier markets in our definition. So the uh, FUSI frontier markets, we have around 300 large and small cap stocks in the index. So this is a very general introduction of the yes, how, how it was it is built and what kind of uh, structure it includes. So uh, we have four, uh, 400, uh, 49 country uh, developed and emerging markets in the FUSI GIS and over 19K stocks uh, in the index. Here uh, we also, uh, actually when we do our FUSI GIS, we will take a look, uh, we, will, we will take a look into it by regional breakdowns. We have a regional breakdowns and also here we have the North America, the developed Europe, Asia Pacific, China, it's Japan, then Japan alone, uh, China alone, Latin Amer America, uh, uh, Middle East and Africa, and also the emerging Europe. So you can see that Malaysia sits into the third uh, regional break, uh, group, which is the Asia Pacific, it's, ja it's China, it's Japan. So when Malaysia is here, we will uh, take uh, we will use it to do the index review to determine what kind of uh, what kind of stocks will belong to the large cap, uh, mid cap, and small cap uh, companies, and also uh, what kind of indices they will they will sit into. And then uh, we have a. Uh, uh, some headlines under the FUSI GIS, uh, that is the FUSI Global Total Cap, FUSI Global All Cap, FUSI All World, FUSI Global Small Cap, Small Micro Cap, and also the Micro Cap. And uh, under each group, we have uh, the developed emerging, emerge, we have the advanced emerging and secondary emerging under these groups. And also uh, here, I also show the Malaysia, Malaysia's weight under each headline indices. Although uh, actually the Malaysia's weight in from a very global or international perspective is not that big, um, especially in the total cap or, or all cap, uh, it's less than 1% weighting in the index. However, uh, we can take a closer look in at the Malaysia. Uh, it's market status and it, it's uh, market cap and also it's uh, weighting its percentage in in the FUSI overall, FUSI emerging and FUSI ASEAN index, because these are regional indexes that are more related to Malaysia. And you can see that in FUSI overall, overall we cover those large and mid-cap companies from developed and emerging markets. Uh, Malaysia's weighting is around uh, uh, 0.18%. Uh, and in FUSI emerging markets, uh, the uh, Malaysia's weighting is around 1.8%. But and then in FUSI ASEAN is around 20% weighting in the index. Yeah. So in the FUSI ASEAN index, we have five ASEAN countries, and you will be very familiar with, which is Singapore, Malaysia, Thailand, Philippines, and also Indonesia. So Malaysia is around 20% in the index. And here um, I show the the assets that check in our FUSI uh, FUSI GIS. You can see uh, there are total around more more, more than uh, 15, 15 billion USD that check in our our all uh, FUSI Russell indices. But in, in FUSI Russell indices, we do not only have the FUSI GIS, we also have like Russell US indices, which is also very famous in, in the world. So if we take a look at the FUSI GIS, uh, for the total AUM that uh, that includes the active and also the passive, it's around 1.9 trillion USD uh, assets. And then under these assets, they will check our, um, like the broader original multi-country indices, and some will check the single country or the frontier or some sector indices. And then, and what's 
malicious role and we can take a more closer look at it and here we can take uh, we we have some um asian related or malaysia related passive assets that checking checking out indexes one is the fusi asian 40 index and we have around three um etfs that listed in the us singapore Mal malaysia with uh, uh around 53 million usd uh, assets and then the other one is the Fuzzy Person Malaysia in a series. We have around five funds uh, that checking mainly on the Fuzzy Person Malaysia KLCI index. And this is the uh, status of the passive assets that checking the Fuzzy's ASEAN or Malaysia indexes all over the world. And of course, we also have uh, derivatives. That is, the we have a futures that checking the FUSI Malaysia Index on SGX. And also we have the futures and options that checking the Bursa Malaysia KLCI on Bursa, on Bursa Malaysia. And for this part, I will not uh, touch touch on this because we will have, we have later we have another uh, section to talk about the derivatives in the future. And so, and I think most of you may concern how the company can be uh, included or assessed as, as whether it is eligible to be included to the to the index. So here I, I show the methodology summary of the FUSIC GIS for reference to take a look at uh, what kind of requirements or criteria we are looking at to assess a company. And of course, uh, the universe coverage will be very very uh, global and, and our FUSIC is, uh, is aimed to capture over 99% of the global investable universe. And we have the country classification, as I mentioned just now, Malaysia is the advanced emerging market. And then we have the size segment. We have, uh, we separate the, the, in, the, the universe into eight geographical regions. And then uh, Malaysia sits in the Asia Pacific, ex China, ex Japan, because we will we will take a look. Uh, we will we will independently independently to take into take a look into different the, the eight uh, regions to rank the the companies by their full market cap, and also uh, have other other requirements like liquidity, like free float, and something something like that to assess the company. So after after we have the size segment, we have the liquidity screening. The liquidity screening will have uh we will uh, reveal the past twelve months um liquidity. That is the daily median trading volume of the company to see whether it can fulfill our requirements on 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 the liquidity screening. And then after the liquidity screening, we also have some size requirements. The size requirements will be conducted within the region, like uh, like the Asia Pacific, ex Japan, ex Japan, ex China one. We will we will do it standalone, and we will have the uh percentile rank to see what kind uh we have to to see what kind of uh companies will sit in the large cap, mid cap, and also small cap uh indexes. And then we also will have a assessment on the free flow to uh, to see whether it can meet a minimum free flow of five percent, and also for this whole inner series, the inner review will be conducted uh semi annually in each March and September, and the uh, uh, data will be the the last business day of June and December. So and also we have applied the the IPO fast entry rules because when uh we, we the index reviews will be semi annually and sometimes uh into review day we will have some new listings uh, li uh new listings that will be eligible for the inclusion to the index that will be they will be included to the index by the fast entry. Then uh we uh the the if the large cap IPOs that are uh, large enough, or they are, uh, they can meet the liquidity test. They will be included included to the index after five days, with a second chance of inclusion at the following quarter review if the a minimum of three months trading history exists. Yeah, that's how we how we do the physical uh, methodology and also the review and how we uh, assess a uh, a company or stocks whether it is eligible to be included to the index. 
So after all this, and also, of course, we need to take a look at the Malaysia's performance in uh, within the region or co to compare with its peers in the ASEAN countries. So here we take a look at the FTSE Malaysia Index to compare with all world uh, emerging ASEAN and also the ASEAN extended. You can see that in short term, especially for uh, in one year perspective, Ma Malaysia's performance is quite good. So for this FTSE Malaysia Index, we captured the large mid cap Malaysian uh, companies, and we uh, it recorded around twenty two percent return in the past few past one year. It's it's quite attractive among this uh these regions in short term, and then also uh to compare with its peers in in the ASEAN region, and here we uh listed all these ASEAN countries. STI re uh, represent uh. Uh, Singapore, and then FUSI Thailand, which is Thailand, FUSI Indonesia is Indonesia, uh, FUSI Philippines is Philippines, and then we have also have the FUSI uh, Frontier Large Mid Cap Vietnam, that, that represents Vietnam. And all of these indices capture the large mid cap uh, companies listed in respective uh, uh, stock exchanges. So uh, from a, a, a short term uh, perspective and also Malaysia is del delivering some uh, relatively attractive return to compare to its peers. Like uh, we take a look at the one year perspective as mentioned just now, it's, it, its return is around 22% and compared to other peers, the most perform, uh, well performed one is Singapore, which is 9.4% in the past, past one year. And then from a three-year perspective, although it's not the best performer, however, it's the it, it sits in the top three, and also also with, with a with a good uh, with a good performance to deliver. Yeah. So this is the stock performance that uh, Malaysia can uh shows, and also we can take a look at the uh stocks the industries within FUSI Malaysia Index. FUSI Malaysia Index, there are around uh, uh, 39 companies in the index. It, we, among these 39 indexes, we, of course, we, we all, maybe we're all well, well aware of that is that financials is the largest uh, industry in this index and maybe also in the whole Malaysia uh, stock market. And we have eight um, financial companies in this index with around 37% weighting. And the second one is the utilities and third one is the consumer stables. And of course, we do not have any tech companies, technology industries in, in this FUSI Malaysia index. And for the size segment, we have we have uh, 17 companies that belong to the large cap, uh, which accounts for around 70% uh, of the weighting, and the rest are mid cap companies. And something very interesting is that when I do some uh, research or analysis for the historical industry distribution changes, and show, which is shown show on the screen, it's very interesting is that uh, from 2008 to 2023, around 16 years, uh, the changes is um, like, uh, what, what the uh, especially for the um, uh, industries that I have a a a, a yellow circle here. Uh, the first one is basic materials. No, uh, the the for for these two charts, the upper chart is uh, in terms of weighting. The weighting changes of each industries in in FUSI Malaysia index, and the bottom one is in terms of number of stocks. The stock number changes in within the index. So for the basic materials one, both the weightings and the stock numbers are increasing from uh, in the past 16 years. And you can see that the Petronas Chemical Group joined the index as the first basic materials constituents back to 2010. And then uh, for the consumer staples, the weightings didn't change much. However, the number of stock changes a lot. Uh, we have we can see more uh, food and beverage companies that are uh, included into the index in the past few years. Though the the weighting is not is not a, a huge changes changes in the index. And then the financials, the most important industry in 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 FUSI Malaysia index, we can see that the the weightings uh is uh increasing 
but the number of stocks is very stable. It keeps at around eight stocks in the index. But these eight stocks are very uh, famous banks names to the, especially to the Malaysian people, right? Like the Public Bank, the Malayan Bank, the AMMB Holdings, and also the Hong Long Bank. Actually, they have stayed in the index for over 20 years. So they are very old in the index. And then for the healthcare one, uh, we have we have seen the, the changes up and ups and downs within uh, in the past 15 years. And we can see uh, the first first healthcare company is the IHH, IHH Healthcare, a joint index in 2012. And then as mentioned just now, the technology. Actually, we didn't see any technology company in FUSI Malaysia index uh, uh, in recent years. The, the only one appears in back to 2008. And actually, that that in the uh, that technology company still exists in in the market at this moment. But the market cap drops, so it become a, a micro cap, a micro cap or small cap company. So it did not it did not appear in this uh Fuxi Malaysia index, which covered the large and mid cap, uh stocks in the index. So this is a very some interesting points that we can see from the Fuji Malaysia index that will also reflect the development or the economy development of Malaysia. And also another point is about the uh, Malaysia's stocks is dividend yield. Uh, so we can see that on the right side, the dividend yield has been, uh, this is the index dividend yield. It has been mostly uh, between 3% to 4%. And the latest dividend yield is around, is about 3.7% um, uh, at end of June this year. And on the, on the left-hand side here, I show the past 10 years performance. Uh, one is the price return and the other one is the total return. The total return means we consider the dividends into our index. Uh, so we can see the dividend return is always positive return in the past 10 years. And so the uh, then here we show the top 10 constituents within the FUSI Malaysia index at this moment. And I think I think most of you will be very familiar with these big names in Malaysia, the banks or also those uh, basic materials or healthcare names, and uh, like those uh, banks, uh, they stay in the index for over twenty years, and also the 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 press metal joined the index in back to two thousand and eighteen. And now it is the largest basic materials company in the index. And as mentioned just now, IHH Healthcare is the first healthcare constituents uh, joined the index back to 2012. Yeah, so this is the uh, uh, the the in index uh, index introduction of of FUSI Malaysia. And here I also show, as mentioned in the previous slides, um, about the country classification and uh, Malaysia is classified as advanced emerging. And so here I show the criteria, how we classify the developed advanced emerging, secondary emerging and frontier uh, markets for your reference. So that's all for my part. And let's see uh, any questions from you that I could I could help or I could uh, provide some, uh, some uh, answers here. Thank you very much, Miko. Um, all participants, please type your questions in the Q&A box. Thank you very much. So Miko, um, for a company, um, is it better to be represented in as many indexes as possible? Uh, actually, uh, it's not about the number because uh, once the company, whether the company will be included to a broad-based index depends on its market cap, uh, its free flow market cap, uh, its liquidity and something like that. And we have several uh, criteria to assess a company, whether it could be included into the index. So uh, once it can meet the criteria, it will be fall into different indexes like the large cap, mid cap, small cap, or even the micro cap indexes or different regional indexes so it's not about the number it's about whether it could be included to the global global index series okay sure so um you have mentioned that um the 
constituents will be based on um, a set of methodology for screening. Mm -hmm. um, and then um, during the reviews, um, these companies will be um, screened based on the set of methodologies. So if there are changes, um, where can companies or uh, company uh, personnel check um, these updates? Yeah, and actually all this, all this information are public information from our website and also you can subscribe about our index notice. We will um we will have different index notice to announce the changes after each uh index review, especially for Fuzi Giz. It happens in March and September. And after after the review, we will have the index announcement published by email or by website. To uh to notice all the uh investors or all the asset managers about the changes of the, of the index. Thank you. So, if companies are interested in um knowing more, like let's say um they are not a part of any indices uh as yet, um. Is there an email they can write to for a more customized session with um, the FTSE team? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we have a hotline for a different region. And uh, let me uh, share the, my screen again. Yeah. And we also have a general email. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's here. Yes, so we have a hotline in Asia Pacific, in Hong Kong, Tokyo, Sydney, and also in EMEA and North America. And here we have the general email, which is the info at fuzzyrussell.com. And for we can, uh, you if you have any query regarding our indexes, and you can send us email, and we will have our colleagues to reply to you. Um, we have a question. Uh, what is the qualification to become a microcap for Malaysia? Um, it's it's not tested only for Malaysia market. We uh, as I mentioned in my presentation just now, we have eight geographical uh, groups to look into, and for the one that Malaysia sits in is the Asia Pacific, is Japan, is China. And within this uh, region, we have several markets in it, and we will combine all the stocks listed from this re within this region and to rank by the full market cap. And, and so we, because for our large cap, we have seven, we, the, the coverage, the market coverage is around 70%. And for uh, uh, small cap, uh, mid small cap, mid cap, and then will be 90%. And then for micro cap, it'd be about like, like 98% of the investable universe. So we will see the um, full market cap and also the free flow investable market cap and also the liquidity to rank the, uh, the, the eligible securities within this region to determine uh, by the a percentile uh, the company should belong to which which market size. Okay, so would you say um, the ranking is actually based more on the percentile of um, the overall number of uh, companies um, in this index rather than um, it's um, based on an absolute number? Not absolute number. It's relative. It's a uh, okay. percentile. Like uh, mm -hmm. like the large cap. Large cap. We have set it at around seventy percent. So within the region, the uh, Asia Pacific is Japan, is China. Uh, for all those uh, listed companies in this region, we'll rank by rank it, uh, mm -hmm. by descending number. Uh, 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 yes, and then we will cut at the seventy percent on of the full market cap. Okay, so. Um, all this is relative. Yeah. So the movement of um the market cap, um the liquidity and everything, it's also in a global perspective rather than a singular um yeah perspective. Yeah, that's true. Because thanks the for Fuzzy, Fuzzy case is a a global in a series instead of domestic one. So all we, mm -hmm. we will consider all together with from an international angle. Thank you. Um, perhaps uh, we can take in a few more questions. Please type your questions in the Q&A box. Thank you. Uh, 
um, is there any case study or example of price appreciation when a company is newly included in an index? Uh, I beg your pardon, the question? Okay, the question is, um, have you come across any case study or examples like when a company is newly included into an index and then following that, the share price of the company actually appreciates? <laughs> I because um the in the company to be included in the index is not immediately, and mm -hmm. we will have uh like uh the index review period in March and September, and we will announce the uh the review result adv in, in advance, and then uh we will have a period of time to let the market to to know about this uh results what kind which company will be in and which company will be out. And so uh, there will be a period to for the for the market to accept this this results. Yeah. And for those IPO in IPO fast entry companies is the same. We will have uh, a period. It's short it's, it's of course it's shorter shorter than the regular index review. It will be like days uh, few, uh within a week to announce to uh, to announce the the result and to get to include include the company. So I didn't I didn't see so far I didn't see any um showcase about this the price appreciate a lot after it is include it's being included to the index. Thank you. So Miko, um, can you perhaps um, share a little bit more about how liquidity affects um, the inclusion or exclusion of a certain constituent? Yes, and for the liquidity test, actually we set um, two sets of requirements for those existing constituents, which means the stocks already in the index, and also another set of uh, liquidity tests for those um, candidates which are not in the index yet. And we will take a look at the past uh, 12 month uh, daily trading volume and to uh, to set a um, percentage for around 0.4% uh, and 0.05%, 0.04%. And to check uh, around uh, eight out of the 12 month and 10 out of the 12 month, whether it uh, can fulfill this uh, this percentage requirement to determine its it, it, whether it can it can pass the liquidity test. Yeah, only the company that passed the liquidity test will be will go into the next step to be assessed whether it could be uh it, it could be assessed by its uh market cap, its size, and also also the free flow or something like that to rank by the full market cap to determine it which size it belongs to. Okay. So it's a very robust um, process um, because it's um, fulfilling a certain requirement before it's ranked. Yes. It's multiple yes. Steps. yes, and all, all of this for the physicists and also for other, even other indices, uh, we have ground rules because all of these indices are uh, rule-based indices. And we publish the ground rules. The in the ground rules, we um we we uh detailed uh, we we show the details of the uh, screening, how we do the uh, liquidity test, and how we count the price, and how we do the uh, market cap ranking. And we we all we all of this uh, information are public uh public information that could be accessible by our in our, our website. Yeah, I think uh, these are the questions for today. Um, first of all, um, on behalf of Bursa Malaysia, thank you very much uh, to Miko for explaining um, how um, Malaysia's role in geese is. And also um, thank you for sharing your insights with us. Uh, thank you to all the participation for your time and participation today. Um, thank you very much and have a very good evening, everyone. Thank you. Thank you so much, Miko.